As an architect and a photographer, I am giving you permission, full creative permission to do your edits in the way you want. Today, we're gonna to be editing a photo of an architectural classic. Why a classic? Because I want this to be your sign that you can go as heavy or as crazy as you want with your Lightroom architectural photography editing. I'm actually going back to an old photo I took of this Frank Lloyd Wright building. This is the Robbie House in Chicago. And one of the things I wanna do is really emphasize some of the geometry and the things that are going on in this photo. In particular, you've got the softscape, which is the landscaping or the trees and the bushes on the left side of this photo. And at the right side, you have the hard edges of the building. You also have a really bright day with no clouds in the sky. It's completely blown out. This is an old photo, so I don't have as much dynamic range to pull back the sky. So I'm really gonna play into that brightness compared to the darkness that you see at the entrance of the building. So I'm gonna jump right in and do my basic edits, probably pull down the exposure, maybe drop some of the highlights, raise the shadows. For this first step, I'm really just looking at the histogram, looking at the photo and trying to even up the tones so the shadows and the dark areas aren't too black and the white highlights areas aren't too bright. Now, this photo was taken on an old Rebel T2i and because of that, it doesn't have some of the sharpness that modern day cameras have. So I'm actually gonna pull some of the texture and the clarity into this photo, hoping that the bricks and the other detail on the side here will pop a little bit more. Later Later on, I'm actually gonna reduce the clarity using some masking, but for now, we're just gonna kind of boost that just to give our photo that little bit of extra crispness. When it comes to hue and saturation, I don't like to play with the vibrance and the saturation too much, but in this case, because I feel like the photo is a little bit washed out, I'm just gonna boost them ever so slightly, and then we'll jump down right to the HSL tab and start making adjustments there so that we can control this a little bit more. One of the things I wanna do is saturate the red brick in the building, but then the greens, the soft scape in this photo, we're gonna desaturate and hue shift just a little bit. So I'm looking at this thinking I wanna raise the reds and the oranges and the warm tones, but if you're not sure what color it is that exactly you need to control, you can grab this little guy and just say click on the brick and drag it up and down and you can see it will drag both the red and the orange proportional to how much of that is in the portion of the image that you're dragging over. Same thing if I go to the left and say I wanna desaturate these greens, I can come down here and it's almost completely green. And of course I can go back in and just make some fine tweaks for that afterwards. You can also see in the color of this brick, there is a little bit of magenta. So when I drag that, some of the areas here get saturated or desaturated. So it's always good if you're not sure, again, to grab this little guy just to make those fine detail adjustments. And I do wanna make sure that these flowers stay saturated. So if you see, I grab this little tool and I drag it up and down, it's gonna tell me I need a bit more yellow. And we're just gonna make some slight tweaks to the greens to make them a little bit more orange and maybe those yellows just pull them in to make them a little bit more yellow. Looking at the luminance, what I wanna do is maybe make the reds a bit brighter. So drag those up and then drag the greens down just to make them darker. Again, we're really trying to add this contrast. So before our hue and saturation adjustments, after, you can see one of the things it's done is by desaturating the green, we've actually gotten rid of some of the staining on these precast concrete elements. So maybe this green is some runoff from some of the plants up here, and if we desaturate it, you can see it kind of just brings that all in and really brings emphasis to the red tones of the house itself. If you remember in the first step, we went in and we dropped the highlights and raised the shadows. That really stretched out all of the detail in our image, but it left our image looking very flat. So now we're gonna go down to the contrast or the tone curve and add that contrast back in. So I'm gonna grab this linear and change it to medium. And what that does is it gives me all these points that I can now go in and start to tweak. If I want more contrast, the best way to do that is by creating an S curve. And as I start to exaggerate that more, you can see that it starts to add more contrast back into my image. Now, if there's a certain portion of your image that you want more contrast in, again, if you grab this little tool and you say, you know, maybe I want this area to be darker, you can see on the right side of the tone curve, it's showing me exactly where that is. So I can either click and drag that down or drag it up, 
or if I'm just feeling like the points I have are okay, I can just take the ones I already have and, and modify them that way. You can also see that in the background, it's showing you this histogram behind the tone curve. So if you say, oh, there's a lot of tonal range kind of in that, I guess it's the shadowy portions. And if we drag that down, that's probably all of this information over here, this information here that's not completely black, but it's the dark portions that we're just making ever so slightly darker to again, add that contrast that we wanna see in our image. Here's before the tone curve and here's after, that's gonna give us that extra little bit of contrast to make all of the elements of the building actually stand out. Where I personally have the most fun when editing my photos is under this masking tab. What I'm gonna do is start adding some linear gradients to darken portions of my image and maybe remove some of that clarity that we added in the first step. I really like to do these kind of gradients where we darken the foreground, maybe darken some of the elements off to the left side of the image here. So I'm gonna bring that mask all all the way down, which is nice because now the dappled light effect that's coming through the trees actually starts to stand out a little bit more and gives us this like moody aesthetic of, okay, we're entering the building. You know, we have this tree canopy overhead. What does it feel like to have that light coming down? Now those little pieces of light really stand out. I'm gonna do another linear gradient on the right side of the image. And this one, I'm actually going to drop the clarity. And you can see what that is doing. It's, it's softening some of the harsh shadows that we have again from that light. It's making the blades of grass a little bit less contrasty and maybe just removing some overall detail because what we really want to do is focus our view in towards that single element which is the entrance. I'm going to do another one of these but this time I'm going to put it on the left side of the image. One thing that I like to do to really emphasize the direction of the lights is to put this haze effect. So I actually grab the dehaze and if you see you drag it to the left, it kind of makes the light look like it's streaming in a little bit more. In this case, because the sky is so blown out, it doesn't matter. Like we could go ahead and drop the highlights, but we're not gonna get any detail back in that sky because it's already completely white. Looking at this a little closer, I'm actually noticing some chromatic aberration. I shot this on a relatively inexpensive lens back in the day, so I'm gonna come all the way down, and the way that you wanna remove that is under lens corrections. If you hit remove chromatic aberration, it's gonna do its best to try and minimize it. In this case, it did an okay job, but if I go into manual, you can see as I drag the amount up, there's still, let me zoom in a little bit more. So there's there's all this purple around the edges of the leaves. You could desaturate it in hue and saturation, but instead I'm actually gonna say defringe it. And now it's pretty well gone. Back up to masking, one of the other things I wanna do is do a brush to darken some specific areas in this image. So I'm gonna grab a brush and just say negative one exposure, and I'm just gonna drop the flow on it just so that we're not gonna be too crazy with it. And then I'm just gonna say, you know, I want this to be a bit darker and I can slowly start to brush portions of the image in, or maybe I don't want there to be as much emphasis. Before the brush, after the brush, I just kind of darken some of the portions of the bushes over here. One more brush, but this time I'm actually gonna do a plus exposure. And I think what I wanna do is bring some emphasis to the center of this image in towards the door area. So I'm gonna say maybe plus 0.5 and then just start to brush ever so slightly. And if you're not sure where your brush is affecting, if you hit the O button, it'll actually show you in red, this is the area that it's affecting. If I hit O again, go back out. Now, as I drag the exposure, you can see it's bringing a little bit more attention in towards my door area. Maybe that's a bit too much. You don't wanna wash it out too much, just enough to really bring emphasis to the portions of your image that you want to be the most important. Just to finish this off, I'm gonna do a slight radio gradient just to bring even more contrast to this. The last thing you might wanna do is if you're trying to fit this into an Instagram grid is go into color grading. Again, I feel like this is probably the most optional step. In this case, because I really wanna emphasize the warm tones, I might just do a little contrast like this. 
make the shadows red and the highlights a little bit teal. Photos of architecture can be some of the most fun types of photos to edit because you don't have people to worry about. So you can really take the edit and do anything you want with it. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and leave a comment down below or check out either of these videos right here so you can jump right in to another Lightroom editing tutorial. And until the next one, peace. So check this out. The GoPro is here and when I go like this, now you're looking at the footage from the GoPro. It's magic.